Hey, this is Jeff with Site Tech Intermountain. Hey, I got a question for you. Does the perfect job site exist? I think I need to show you this one. We at Site Tech get to see some really cool projects. We have a lot of different customers. Everybody's using mostly the same technology, but everybody's got a little bit different job site. This one is a really cool example I wanted to show you. This is a tilt-up pop-up building that uh, our customer's doing. And I gotta tell you, I was the kid that played in the sandbox way too long as a kid. I picked this industry because I like it, not because I was forced into it. And I love training on it and showing people what the technology can do because I used to do it. This is a good example of a D6 dozer down there on the bottom, building the pad, building it up in lifts. And up here, once the pad is built, we've got excavators actually cutting in the footings. This guy out here cutting all this in is running an earthworks excavator. He's cutting in footings so tight that they're bank pouring all these, and he's doing all by himself in the cab. Once you get up on top here, we've got side dumps placed in the material. They're all pretty well trained, which is weird for truck drivers, but they know exactly where to put it because they can see what the graders are doing. We got two Earthworks cat graders. One's placing and roughing. The other one is also placing, but he's doing a little bit more of the finish as he comes across the pad. And on the edge, once the floor is built, we've got an Earthworks cat excavator actually cutting in the footings for the walls. Out in the parking lot, you got an older GCS dozer. Still good system, still works great. And he's roughing in the parking lots. So let's kind of break this down as we go. So starting with this guy, he's actually cutting in the parking lot, roughing in the edges. He knows exactly where his limits are. He doesn't have any stakes out there that he has to follow. He knows what his grade is, where the edges are, doesn't have to have anybody on the ground. And I, you're probably going to hear me say this a couple different times, but it's what I call cut it in once right the first time. That's where you make your money with GPS. So breaking it down, he's cutting it in, roughing it in. It is pretty wet material, but once they get it out here on the pad, look at this. This D6 all by itself, notoriously not a very big dozer, right? He's out there roughing this pad in because he's doing it once right the first time. You got two testers in the background that are just bored out of their mind. They trust what's going on. This guy doesn't have any batter boards or stakes or anything that he has to follow. He knows exactly what grade is. He's cutting it down. He's placing it. He's doing it from finished grade. He's given perfect lifts so the roller has a chance to give a really good tight compaction. If it's a smooth drum or a sheep's foot, it doesn't matter. He knows where his limits is, the edge of the building, the corners, and he ups and downs, and he's given it the chance that it needs, and he cuts it in perfect. He can sit in the machine, he's not worried about someone checking grade, not another guy on the ground out there with a laser saying, hey, you're low here, you're high here. These guys know exactly how to use this ma machinery. They know exactly what to do with it, how to make it easier, and trust me, it is so much easier on the operators too when they don't have to be forcing themselves to get in and out or wonder. Once this pad is built all the way up, like we mentioned earlier, this one Earthworks excavator is able to do everything from inside the cab of the machine. It's amazing. He's able to see where the footings are tight enough that he can actually go ahead and just cut them in to where they can bank pour them. You do see batter boards on the ground, but this is not for the operator. If you notice, there's no paint marks, there's no string lines. The batter boards are just for the concrete crews to be able to put the points exactly where they need to. You gotta have those those actual bolt patterns where they need to be. He's able to over X this to the right grade. He's able to place it back in, roll it with his sheep's foot, and actually put his bucket back on. It's calibrated. He can finish grade it, uses autos if he wants, and he finish grades it all by himself tight enough, and he's good enough, that we don't have a guy out there on the ground with a laser. It's where you make your money back with this stuff, is not having extra people on the ground, not doing it over and over and over. This is the beauty of the GPS, especially Earthworks, that gives each operator that's a little bit different, different views inside the cap based on what they need. Once the footings are actually cut in, all he has to do is put a smooth drum on it and give it something nice and clean for the concrete crews and we're good to go. Once those are backfilled and filled up and the bolt patterns are in, like I said earlier, you can see here where the side dumps are placing it. You got two graders placing the material and getting it close. These guys also are not working with a guy out there running a total station giving them grades. They're not using lasers. There isn't a separate crew that has to go out and bust their backs putting hubs in the ground. These guys know how to use their equipment well enough 
that they have benched them in. They're good. They're benching in every day. Sometimes when it's hard material, they're benching in and checking twice a day. When they actually go to finish grade, they have actually got these machines tight enough that they finish grade most of the time with GPS, dual GPS. They know exactly what they're doing. And if they need to, they can set up UTS and run a total station on these if they need to. But these guys are hitting it every time. They know exactly what they're doing. After it rolls and compacts down that last time, they put their nice finished grade on it. The beauty of these massless graders is they, they can roll, roll their blades forward and back if they're not running UTS. With that GPS now, they don't have mass to worry about out there. Pulling those into the cab, hitting cones, smacking the, everything that's in the way, they can roll it forward or back based on the material they're in. Your company makes money when they make less passes, when there's less guesswork, when it's all just a seamless thing that's being done. Surveyors are doing way less layout. They're doing more what I call verification. So I've always said in the industry, surveyors now on job sites like this are less staking monsters. They're more verification monsters. The schedule is tighter. It's faster. You don't have to have them out there as much. Um, more times, as long as they built the right model and these machines are calibrated right, the calibration for the job site's good, their base stations are close, they've got the right blade wear in there. I mean, this, this stuff really, really does exactly what you need to. And if you're new to GPS and you haven't used it before, hopefully this video shows you this may be a bigger scale than someone that may be jumping into it, or it may not. But you can see that these guys have visual and that's the other beauty of GPS is it is not just a turn the autos on and go to work and just I can hit grade. It's also what I call job site awareness. Every single one of these guys knows where the limits are. The guys digging footings know where the footings are. You dig everything tighter. Your materials are better um, on the ground because you're not overrunning or underrunning. You can bid it tighter. And it's just an amazing thing all the way around, but it has to be a smooth seam, seamless in between everybody. If you have one element that's out, it just doesn't seem to work right. And so if everybody's on the same page, everybody's trained right, and there again, the job sites are set up right, models are right, this is where customers really love this. This guy out here digging the footings, same thing. He's got a couple different attachments. He's got two buckets that are both measured up. His compaction wheel I don't think is measured up, but he doesn't need that. He doesn't have a guy on the ground painting marks. He's not worried about backing over his own paint marks and messing those up. He has perfect GPS alignment inside the machine. He has perfect grades, perfect wherever, and he doesn't have to have a guy staring at him on the ground or playing hit the rock with the stick. Hopefully these videos really help people understand the abilities that you have to set up all your different machines. The 3D works, it truly does work, but it takes the training, it takes the calibrations, it takes understanding from the ground up. And then there again, you can go ahead and build whatever job sites you want, whatever your Imagine wants, and you can you can build your own models out here if you need to, needed to out in the corners. So you cut floors right, just like this one. This is stuff I used to do. I cut this floor all by myself for footings, before we did footings. Those slopes on the left side are 30 foot slopes, no bellies, no under undercuts. It was all cut without having to put a guy in the ground. Do it right once the first time. So thank you for watching this video from Site Tech Intermountain. Mm -hmm.